Hello Legends. So this video is actually an experimental podcast that I'm going to be running for a few episodes. This first episode is about how I learned how to code. And as a disclaimer, I built out this podcast 100% AI generated. I used Notebook LM to actually have the conversation between the two podcast hosts. And then I used HeyGen to create the AI avatars and then sync them up to the actual voices. So in my eyes, the purpose of this podcast would be to listen to practical experiences, stories, get advice on my journey about how I learned to do coding and automation from scratch. And if the podcast builds up more traction, then I'm also happy to do more stories about how I find running an AI agency, this YouTube channel, and then anything else that might be interesting. And I really think there's a bit of a gap in this kind of content for when you cannot watch the video, but you wanna to listen to the audio, like if you're driving to work or if you're going for a walk or if you're at the gym. So places where you still wanna get immersed in AI automation, listen to practical uh, advice and stories, we're well, not able to actually watch the video, but you do wanna to listen to the audio. So if you find this kind of podcast interesting and you wanna to listen to more, uh, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and then comment below what kind of stuff you'd like to hear about next. And if you're also interested in exactly how I built this out, so the exact process from start to finish, which tools I used, how much it cost me, and then how I pieced it all together, comment below that you wanna see that kind of tutorial, and I'm happy to build that out for you guys as well. All right, and with this intro out of the way, let's get into episode one, where we speak about how I learned how to code. Hope you enjoy. So today we're gonna dive into something pretty cool. Um, how to go from like, Zero coding experience. It's like none. Yeah, to building your own apps and automations Rare. with AI. Yeah. And we're looking at a story from someone who actually did this. Yeah, it's not just some theory or like, uh, uh, you know, someone yeah. saying, oh yeah, you can do this. This is someone who actually did this. It's a real person's story. Yeah. And they started with wanting to improve customer support using AI tools. Oh. Which I think a lot of people can yeah, relate to. Totally. But they realized that the tools out there weren't doing what they needed. Like the off-the-shelf stuff just wasn't yeah. cutting it. Yeah, yeah. So they decided to build their own. That's amazing. And at this point, they don't know anything about coding. That's the thing. Yeah. They don't know anything about coding. Yeah. And that's where it gets really interesting. This is really cool. They find this tool called VoiceFlow. And... VoiceFlow is this visual platform for building chatbots. It's like drag and drop. You don't need to know like the actual code. You're just dragging and dropping these elements to build workflows. So it's like coding training wheels. It is. It's like coding training wheels. But for building powerful tools. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So through VoiceFlow, they start to learn about those core coding concepts, mm -hmm. like workflows, how a process goes from start to finish, data manipulation, how to work with the data. Yeah, how to like yeah. make the data do what you want it to do. Exactly. But there were definitely some challenges along the way. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, learning to code, especially from scratch. Especially from scratch. It can be so confusing. Right. Our subject actually talks about those early struggles, yeah. like just dealing with data, inputting it, yeah. getting the right output, debugging all those errors that come up. It just felt like a complete mystery. Yeah, like what am I even looking at here? Totally. But this person didn't let those challenges stop them. Yeah, this is what's so cool. They just had this desire to gain control over the tools they used. They were just like, I'm going to figure this out. Yeah, like they didn't want to be limited by Got what it. was out there. They wanted to be able to customize, exactly. build their own thing. So they ended up putting over 100 hours wow. into building their first Zendesk app. 100 hours? 100 hours. <laughs> and that included research and learning alongside the actual coding. I think that's something that people don't realize it's not just the coding, you gotta learn. All the stuff around it. Yeah, all the stuff yeah. around it, exactly. And what's crazy is that what took 100 hours back then, thanks to AI and how quickly it's evolving, right. can now be done in a fraction of that time. Sometimes even just minutes. Wow, so they were really on the bleeding edge. They were, it was the Wild West back then. Yeah. But they even talk about relying heavily on ChatGPT in those early days. Yeah, they were using ChatGPT to understand error messages. Yeah. And to figure out data types. I love that. Yeah. Because it shows that even back then they were like, okay, how can I leverage these tools right. to help me on this journey? To help me through this. Yeah. Yeah. And they make a really important point here. Yeah. They say that even if you don't become like a full-on coding expert. Right. Just understanding how code works. The basics. Yeah. It makes using those no code, low code tools way more effective. It's true. You can get so much more out of them yeah. if you understand what's going on under the hood. Like, you don't need to be able to write it all yourself. Yeah. But you can read it. You can understand it. You can understand it. Yeah. It's like being able to read a map. 
You might not be a cartographer. Right. You might not be able to draw a map from scratch. Right. But you can understand the symbols. You can get where you need to go. Yeah. You can navigate. Yeah. And that's what's so powerful about understanding the fundamentals of code. And that's what lets you unlock those tools like VoiceFlow. Yeah. And Make.com. Exactly. And yeah. so instead of going like the traditional route of taking a coding class. Right. They recommend a totally different approach. Okay. They challenge you, the listener. Right. To pick 10 tools that you use all the time okay and then just dive into their api documentation now api that's like so apis are basically like messengers okay they allow different tools to talk to each other okay so for example let's say you're using asana okay and you create a new task in asana you can set it up so that it automatically sends a message to your team on slack oh that's cool and that's happening because of api calls Okay. So when you look at the API documentation for your tools, right. you're learning how to send and receive those messages. So you're learning how to make the tools talk to each other. Yeah. That's awesome. At our subject, actually, they tried the traditional route first. Okay. They went to W3 schools to learn coding. Oh, yeah. But they found it too abstract. Too theoretical. Yeah. Not hands-on enough. Exactly. They wanted to build something. They wanted to get their hands dirty. Yeah. And that's what I think is so cool about this whole story. And then we get to the heart of it. Mm -hmm. Automation. All right, let's talk about automation. They break down building automation into three steps. Okay. First, you write the core script, so the instructions. Right. Then you integrate that script with your tool using something called webhooks. Okay. And finally, you handle the output data. So what happens with the information? Yeah. Okay, so webhooks. Uh-huh. I've heard this term before, but I don't really. Okay, webhooks are like those dominoes. Okay. When you knock over the first one, right. it sets off this chain reaction. So it's like, if this, then that. Exactly. When this happens, yeah. do that. Okay. So let's say in Asana, when a new task is created, okay. that can trigger a webhook right. that sends a notification to Slack. Got it. So that first domino is like the task creation. Yeah. And then the webhook is what makes chain reaction. the other dominoes yeah. fall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they give us two really good examples of how they use this. Okay. The first one is automating responses in Zendesk. Oh, cool. So someone submits a customer support ticket. Right. Based on keywords in their message, an automated response is sent back. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. So it's like order status or tracking details. Oh, that'd be so helpful. Yeah. Especially if you get a lot of those same questions. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What's the other example? The second one is summarizing tasks in ClickUp. Yeah. So you have this new task, all these details. Right. Deadlines, subtasks, who's assigned to it. Right. This automation pulls out the key info. So you don't have to wade through it all. Makes it easy to digest. Okay. Yeah. I'm starting to see how powerful this is. Yeah. But I got to say, this whole think like a programmer thing, Yeah. it's still a little intimidating. I know. It sounds scary. Yeah. But what our subject realized is that the biggest change wasn't about learning a specific coding language. Right. It was about developing that mindset. Okay. So how do you start thinking like a programmer? It's all about breaking problems down Monster. into smaller steps. Like those dominoes? Exactly. You think through all the scenarios. All the possibilities. Yeah, even the crazy ones. Okay. And you pay super close attention to detail. So you got to be kind of obsessive. Yeah, kind of. Okay. So let's say you're working with data. Right. You need a system to go through each piece of information. Right. Make sure nothing gets missed. So you're not just like doing the first couple and then calling it a day. No. You got to be thorough. Okay. It's like having a checklist okay. and ticking off each item. Got it. Another example is debugging. Oh, yeah. Finding those errors. Exactly. Yeah. Instead of just randomly trying things, you use log messages. Log messages. Okay. They tell you what's happening at each step. So it's like leaving a trail of breadcrumbs. Yes. To find your way back. Exactly. Okay. So you can pinpoint exactly where things went wrong. I like that. That makes sense. Okay. So where do AI coding assistants fit into all of this? These AI tools like ChatGPT can be really helpful. Okay. But you got to use them effectively. So what are your tips? Yeah. How do we get the most out of these AI coding buddies? You got to give them context. Okay. It's like giving someone directions. Yeah. The more specific you are, the better. So don't just say, hey, write me some code. No. Give them the API documentation. Right. Tell them exactly what you want the code to do. Like what the end result should be. Yeah. And maybe even provide some sample responses so basically you're giving them all the puzzle pieces yes so they can put it together exactly i like that okay so how did our subject 
get better at using AI for coding? Well, they started out just like a lot of us. Okay. Struggling with basic debugging, yeah. trying to figure out those error messages. Yeah. But over time, they learned to use those log messages more strategically. Right. And they got really good at breaking down those complex workflows. So they were giving the AI better instructions. Yeah. They were making it easier for the AI to understand. Okay. And that's what led them to this idea of the AI coder. So what does that mean? What is an AI coder? It's a shift in thinking. Okay. They realize that coding is about solving problems and manipulating data. Okay. And these AI tools are like partners in that process. So it's not about the AI taking over. No. It's about working together. It's about collaboration. Okay. The AI can do the heavy lifting. Right. But you're the architect. You're the one calling the shots. Yeah. You're guiding the process. I like that. That's a really cool way to think about it. So we've talked about workflows, data manipulation, API calls. Yeah, a lot of stuff. I'm curious, what are our listeners thinking now? Yeah, have you had any aha moments yet? Yeah, I bet some people are like, whoa, I didn't realize that's how that works. Yeah. But let's not forget, like, this took a lot of dedication. Right. This wasn't just like an overnight thing. No, they put in over 100 hours for that first project. That's serious commitment. It is. It shows you how passionate they were about solving this problem. Yeah, and how willing they were to, like, push through those challenges. Exactly, because it's not always going to be easy. There are going to be times when you're just like, ugh, I'm so stuck. Oh, yeah, for sure. There will be moments of frustration. Yeah. But those are the moments that make the breakthrough so much better. When you finally figure it out, it's yes. like the best feeling. And that's why having the right resources and support is so important. Yeah, like having people you can turn to for help. Yeah. Our subject talks about how valuable it was to have access to documentation, online communities, and, of course, those AI coding assistants. Right, like having a team of experts in your corner. Exactly. So let's go back to those key takeaways for a yes. second. Yeah. What are some of the things that really stand out to you? The biggest one for me is that you don't need to be a coding genius. Right. Mm. You don't need to have a computer science degree. No. Anyone can learn this stuff. If you're willing to put in the work. Yeah. And that's what I love about this story. It's so empowering. It's like anyone can become an AI coder. Exactly. It's just about taking that first step. And remember, you don't have to do it alone. There are so many resources out there. Yeah, there are tons of communities and courses and tutorials. And that brings us to another important point, that project-based approach. Right. Don't get bogged down in theory. Yeah. Pick a problem you want to solve and just start building. That's how you learn best. It's like learning to play an instrument. You don't just read music theory books. Right. You got to actually pick up the instrument and play. Exactly. You got to get your hands dirty. And make some mistakes along the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're going to make tons of mistakes. That's part of the process. It is. It's how we learn and grow. And remember, even the best coders out there. Yeah. They've all been through those moments of like, what am I doing? <laughs> Why is this not working? It's all part of the journey. You just got to keep going. Keep that growth mindset. Exactly. Now, I want to go back to something our subject said earlier. Okay. About not wanting to use those traditional coding tools like W3 schools. Yeah, they found it too abstract. Yeah, they wanted something more hands-on. More practical. And it made me think about how important it is to find learning resources that work for you. Totally. We all learn differently. Some people like the structure of a classroom setting. Others prefer to just dive in and experiment. It's not one size fits all. No, you got to find what works for you. And thankfully, there's so many different options out there. There are, yeah. So experiment and find what clicks for you. That's the key. So our listener has now heard this amazing journey. Yeah, from zero to AI coder. What's one thing we can leave them with to inspire them on their own coding adventures? You know what's really inspiring about this is that it's not just about the technical skills. It's about the way you think. Yeah, they completely changed their mindset. Like they unlocked a hidden potential. Exactly. And that's something that anyone can do. So to our listener out there, yeah. what problem do you want to solve? What would you love to build? What if you could create that app you've always dreamed of? Don't let the fear of coding hold you back. Remember, you don't need to be an expert. You just need to be willing to learn. And to embrace the journey. This deep dive has shown us that it's possible. To go from zero to AI coder. And it's incredibly rewarding. So what are you waiting for? Go out there and build something amazing. It's amazing to think that someone could start with wanting to fix their customer support 
and end up yeah. like changing their whole way of thinking about problem solving. Right. Like they didn't set out to become a coder. Yeah. It just kind of happened organically. Because they were trying to solve a real problem. Yeah. And that's what I think is so cool about this whole AI coder thing. It's not about like becoming a coding master. Right. It's about using code as a tool. To get stuff done. Yeah. And AI is making that tool so much easier to use. Like you said, it's like having a master craftsman by your side. Right. They can handle the technical stuff, but you're the one with the vision. You're the architect. I love that analogy. So this movement, it's not about replacing human creativity. It's about giving us more power. Yeah. Amplifying our abilities. And making it possible for anyone to create amazing things. Exactly. It's like technology is finally catching up to our imaginations. I think that's a great way to put it. So this whole deep dive has been about showing you that coding is not this scary, mysterious thing. It's a skill that anyone can learn. And with AI, it's becoming more accessible than ever. So to our listener, yeah. what will your first AI coding project be? What problem are you going to solve? What awesome thing are you going to create? Don't be afraid to dive in and get started. Remember, everyone starts somewhere. Every expert was once a beginner. Just take that first step and see where it leads you. We'll be here cheering you on. Until next time. Keep learning. Keep experimenting. And keep diving deep.